Hi, in this video, I'm going to rank all the 15 asset types in Game Maker according to my personal taste. So let me know if you agree with them. And if you have your own ranking, let me know in the comments and let's get started. Number 15, Timelines. Why? Number 14, Extensions. Extensions are useful in very specific places like if you want to add Steam support to your game, you want to put ads in your game, or you want to support some third-party library like FMOD. Even in those cases, you're most probably using extensions made by someone else or made by us. So you're rarely ever making an extension yourself. Number 13, Animation Curves. Animation curves were made for sequences, so you could make smooth movement with curves. But you can also use them yourself at runtime for any kind of interpolation, whether that's movement or volume interpolation or anything else. Being able to make those curves visually in the IDE and then use these runtime functions to get the values at runtime makes it really convenient to use them. Number 12, sequences. Sequences have a very particular use case, which for me is cutscenes and animations where I have a lot of moving parts. So it really comes in handy there. It also helps with timing if you want particular functions to be called at particular frames. I once made a music based rhythm game completely based around sequences. Number 11, particle systems. Particle systems are just great because you can very easily make great looking visual effects that are easy to create at runtime, they are performance friendly, and you can put particle systems inside of other particle systems so you can reuse your particles for other particle effects. We are now in the top 10. Number 10, Paths. Paths have a very special place in my heart because they've been around for so long and they're very useful in these specific scenarios where you need movement for say enemies or NPCs where you know they're only gonna move between two points or in a loop. You can also use their data at runtime to do whatever you want with it like I made this racing track using Paths. Number 9, Shaders. Shaders are so fun to make. You're only gonna need them at a particular point in your journey, so most people are not gonna touch that. But once you learn how to program shaders, they add so much to your game, whether it's individual object effects or apply to the whole screen. And as I said, they're just one of the most fun things to program. Number eight, notes. This is a really basic asset, but so useful. It helps me keep track of things that I've done or need to do in the project, and I can document things that I want other team members to know. You know, I won't always set up a Trello or some other tracking system for every project, but I know that notes are always there so I don't lose track of things. Number seven, fonts. I love fonts because it's such an easy way to make your game look better. If you use text in your game, just make a font, set it up, and then use draw set font to use that font. And now your game has a nice looking font and you can make use of SDF if you wanna be able to scale your text up or down without losing any quality. Number six, scripts. This is so high up because it's such an important part of your project and your code. This is where you initialize global variables and global functions that you're gonna use throughout your project. And any code that you put in a script runs when the game starts. You can have multiple scripts where each script covers a particular category of functions. So this is just something that once you start programming your game, you're gonna be using a lot. And we are now in the top five. Rooms, of course. No game would be possible without these, and you have to have at least one of them in a project to run it. It's where you design all of your levels and menus. But it can be annoying sometimes to have to make a new room or do major changes in a room. So it may not be the most fun or relaxing part of making a game, but it definitely is one of the most crucial, if not the most crucial. Tile sets are so fun to make and use because they just make level design so much more easier and they are more performance friendly at runtime. I love using the auto tile feature in Game Maker and from an art perspective, tile sets are just really fun to draw. Number 3 Sounds Sounds are an easy way to add a lot of feel into your game. Importing sounds and then playing them at runtime is an easy and simple process and then there's a lot you can adjust at runtime like the volume, pitch, how they fade, you can add effects, use 3D audio and so on. So they are simple to use but there's a lot of room for customization. Number 2 Sprites 
Sprites are probably my favorite part of any game. Making art is always fun, especially animations. And the sprite editor in Game Maker really comes in handy, whether you wanna draw all of your art in Game Maker, or you just wanna make quick changes to something that you've imported before. You can then use them for objects, style sets, or place them in a room in asset layers. Use 9 slicing for UI, draw them at runtime, use them in shaders and so on. There's endless things you can do with images. Number 1. Objects Number 1 of course has to be objects because this is the most important, the most challenging and the most satisfying part of any project. Objects are the things in your game that you control or fight or collect. That's where you write most of your code and being able to make things that move and behave, bringing a bunch of pixels to life has to be the most satisfying part of making a game. So that's my ranking, but I want to read yours too, whether that's top 3 or top 5 or top 10. Let me know in the comments and I will read them. And that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.